So you had ping pong, and it had one. And they even had sound effects. Remember, it went ping. And then they came up, and then we had Pac-Man. You remember Pac-Man? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Phagocytosis is when white blood cells eat stuff. That's what phagocytosis is. It'd be a great word for Scrabble, by the way. Phagocytosis. Yeah. <laughs> you would win the game because you don't have enough letters for that. Well, you probably could. Okay, now listen. It's anti-tumor. Do you see that? It's autoimmune modulary functions. And I wrote in there that eliminates fungus because I have a lot of patients that come in and they're told they have had fungus. I'm not saying you don't have fungus, but nobody ever tells people why they have fungus and molds. It's possible it could be due to a lack of D. Of course, it'd be, it's going to be caused by sugar. It could be caused by a lack of iodine. But D is important. It's very important. Vitamin D obviously can result, as we are discovering in our office, from inadequate intake with insufficient sunlight. When was the last time that anybody can remember sitting out in the sun in northern Ohio for more than an hour? It's been a few months, hasn't it? It's been five months! I think we should start having road trips. <laughs> Tax deduction. Maybe we should get a little bit of the extension our way. Okay. Insufficient sunlight. Also disorders that limit its absorption. Conditions that impair conversion of vitamin D into metabolites. This is important. It's the liver. It's the liver and the kidneys. You know, I always talk about Dr. Bob's ABCs, apple, beets, and carrots. If you want to live a happy, healthy life, just do yourself a favor. Start eating a half an apple every day. Just break down and eat beets. Just think they're big pieces of cherry candy. Okay? Now the liver is a storehouse for vitamins A, D, E, and K. And that's important. That's why you want to eat the carrots. Carrots are A. Okay? Significant stuff. Dr. Bob's ABCs and liver supplementation are essential for optimal deutilization. So I'm going to just suggest this to you. One month you might want to do milk thistle. One month dandelion root. But you should always be doing something for your liver. When do you stop doing that? You move to the top of some mountain. You didn't breathe air anymore, but we're always breathing toxins. You know, I, I sometimes think that I'm 20 years ahead. Because I used to tell people about the whole water deal. You know, you used to joke, I used to say, if you drink a glass of water, you've, it's been through six people's toilets, and everybody looks, oh, that's so disgusting. But you know, you just saw in the paper in this last year, what are they seeing in all the water? All the chemicals from everything that everybody's been taking for their drugs and they're peeing into the, you do not want to drink tap water. Okay, deficiencies in D may result in impaired bone mineralization. So if you're a doctor, if you're a gynecologist or obstetrician or internist or whoever the heck they are, tell you that you need to go on some kind of osteoporosis medication, just ask them to check your, and it's called 25 hydroxy vitamin D. I, don't, I think I have that another somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. We'll get to that in the next book. That's important. But you also want to have your thyroid tested. Okay? It's not, see, I'm not, this is a vitamin D workshop. If you go to the internet, I also have an iodine workshop. I also have an estrogen workshop. This happens to be another piece to a huge puzzle. You're going to have PMS. MS. I've seen an MS a lot in the literature. So it makes you wonder. Do they talk about people in, in, in moderate climates that have and get more MS? But I also know that people who live in this area like to eat chips more than anywhere else, too. Type 1 diabetes. Front row said amen, didn't you, front row? <laughs> Rheumatoid arthritis. And the seasonal effect disease or disorder, SAD. Okay, dosage and testing. I would suggest serum vitamin D. The best from what I have researched at this point is 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Now, this is where you get it. This is one of the reasons I'm glad you all could be here today. Because this is not about a crapshoot. You go and you get your blood test. If it's below 32, guess what? You need D. I didn't write the rules. You need to take it. How long do you take it? Until you're out in the sun. And you really want to get in the sun. The sun's going to make a huge difference. Any level below 20 is considered a deficiency state. It will increase your risk of breast cancer, prostate cancer, autoimmune disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, and MS. 
That should scare the willies out of you. <laughs> but I'm trying to help you. Optimum ranges are 45 to 50. Normal could be 25 to 56. Anything above 32 is great. Here's the dosage, because everybody says, well, how much should I take? You could take as minimal as 800 international units a day. You could go up to 10,000 a day. Some people are doing 50,000 a day. Just remember this. When your skin starts to itch, that's your little sign, you might want to back off on the D or increase your calcium magnesium. Now, if it was me, I'd be eating sesame seeds and almonds constantly, okay? Um, you could use fish oil, cod liver oil, not one of my favorites, but I have to say that. There's tablets of vitamin D, which we have here in the office, Cataplex D. There's vitamin D drops. You want to make sure you're doing that between probably November and May. You want to be in the sunlight. And you can see where those are my references where I got the information. For those of you watching me on the internet, you have to fill out a health survey form in order to get the vitamin D from us. Now, this vitamin D, the reason that I think it makes such a huge difference, it improves your immune system, helps with calcium absorption. Calcium glues cells together. If you don't have enough calcium, you're going to be perpetually sick. So I'm going to share some with you. I'm going to burst a few of your bubbles. Are you ready to get a pop? When you go someplace and somebody has a sinusitis and somebody has a bronchitis and all the other itises, more than likely you're not going to catch it from them. It's what they've been eating. Now people don't like when they say that. Because most people eat the same food. They eat with reckless abandon. And so, you know, my son said, Dad, when I checked the Facebook guy, he goes, my gosh, everybody's tired and they're sick. He goes, I can't believe what's going on out there. So for those of you in the Internet, cut back on your sugar. For you in the room, cut back on your sugar. Expose yourself to a little sun. <laughs> Watch your soda consumption. Because soda pop has phosphorus in it. Phosphoric acid. So some of you could have a D issue because you're drinking too much soda pop. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you're questioning about how much phosphorus do you have going on in your body, you can have a blood test for your calcium and your phosphorus. You should have 10 parts calcium, 4 parts phosphorus. 10 parts calcium, 4 parts phosphorus. You can do a hair analysis. Your hair analysis, if it's really high in phosphorus, because I always see that, I always know that we have a sugar junkie. And finally, if you have big pupils, those are carbos. People who like to eat carbs have big pupils. Okay, so let's hit the tube off, cameraman.